Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the BMAT Tip Series, where I give you lovely people tips on how to do well in the BMAT. My name is Ali, I'm a fifth year Cambridge medic, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about section two, physics. Everyone loves a list of three, so we're gonna address three things in this video. Firstly, I will implore you not to neglect the physics questions. This is a mistake a lot of people make. We shouldn't be doing that. Secondly, having decided that we're not going to neglect the physics questions, I'll talk a little bit about how you can learn the physics. And finally, we'll talk about some of the best ways to get some practice in for section two physics. Let's start with point number one. Please don't neglect the physics questions. This might seem obvious, but it's actually surprisingly common. Each year on our courses, we talk to students who say something like, I hate physics. Therefore, I'm going to skip all of the physics questions in section two and just just focus on the biology, chemistry and the maths. I've looked at the score conversion chart and even if I skip all seven of the physics questions, I can still get 20 out of 27, which is about a six point something in the BMAT, which is quite a good score. Sadly, this doesn't quite work in practice. Firstly, some of the chemistry and maths questions are actually quite hard, so it's unlikely you'll be getting 100% on those. And secondly, some of the physics questions are actually quite straightforward, just involving plugging numbers into formulae. These are easy marks that we don't want to be missing out on. In fact, the physics questions are probably the second easiest after the biology questions, even if you're not doing physics at A-level, so please don't neglect them. Right, so we've established that we should not be skipping the physics questions. Let's now talk about how we can actually learn the physics. For brushing up on your physics, or or actually any of the sciences, the section two assumed knowledge guide is your friend and I'll put a link to it in the description below. This is a freely available online guide that you can follow that gives you everything you need to know for section two. Alternatively, there is a great website out there called BMAT Ninja. On the website, you'll find revision notes for all three of the sciences and I've linked to some of the free ones in the description of this video. There are six topics in the section two assumed knowledge guide, which will appear here somewhere. And this is the order that we would suggest learning them in. Electricity and energy and force come up every year, so we would suggest doing those first. The next three come up most years, um, and you can safely leave other applications of physics till the end, because it tends to not get asked about very often, and some of the topics are quite scary, so don't worry too much about that. To learn a topic, you should probably read through it in the section two assumed knowledge guide and make sure you understand the concepts that it's trying to tell you and make sure you memorize whatever formulae it gives you. If you're struggling with a topic, you can always watch a YouTube video about it or use BBC Bite Size, which is quite a good resource. Or alternatively, just post in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. If you do this process efficiently, it should take about a few hours to get through the entire physics section two syllabus, which gives you a lot of time left over to practice. At the start, you shouldn't really waste any time revising the topics that you already know from GCSE. You should focus on plugging the holes in your knowledge, and then you can always revise these topics a bit later. So that's how you learn the physics. Let's now talk about how to practice the physics questions. To practice the physics questions, it makes sense to do a lot of past paper physics questions under timed conditions. I say this in every video and I'll say it again. Uh, the easiest way to get practice for any BMAT question is to go on BMAT Ninja, where you can make a free account, and for free, you can do all of the past paper questions for the last 15 years, and then some that we've written ourselves. If you're struggling with a question, you can always ask a teacher. Uh, physics teachers are quite happy to help, even if you're not doing their subject at A-level. Or you can buy access to the worked solutions on BMAT Ninja if you want to, uh, which guide you through the thought process behind doing the questions. For £29, you get access to over a thousand worked solutions written by Oxbridge medical students, and we've got an unlimited bursary scheme for people in financial difficulties. And actually, if you are struggling with a question, um, and you've got a shortage of physics teachers in your school to help, and you don't like the idea of paying for any kind of resource like BMAT Ninja, just post your question in the comments below and I will do my best to give you a work solution for it. Anyway, after doing loads and loads of practice questions to get a grasp of the concepts, you should probably do the last five years of BMAT section two papers under strict timed conditions, i.e. do the whole paper, give yourself half an hour, make sure you stick to that. And that's about all there is to it. We've talked about how you shouldn't neglect section two physics, even if you're not doing it at A level. We've talked about how to learn physics, mostly by using the section two assumed knowledge guide. And finally, we've talked a little bit about how to practice these physics questions. You can do that for free on BMAT Ninja, or if you're concerned about the rise of artificial intelligence, you can always just print off the last 15 years worth of BMAT papers from like 2003 and just work through those under time conditions. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you've got any questions about physics or anything else, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, please could you give it a thumbs up? Um, and if you'd like to see more of the same thing, you might like to subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, so have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.